All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rakakodash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone to rule well in T12, and uh, peace and blessings to the elect, sincere brothers of Israel out there that's pushing this word in all truth and sincerity. Um, this is going to be a response to uh, the whole uh, confusion of faith thing that's going on. Um, you know, the truth being brought out about that term confusion of face and you know just to clarify it um, you know looking it up <clears throat> uh, yeah, that Hebrew word I'll let Esau say it Strong's H thirteen twenty two. Bosheth. 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 Shame, shame, shameful thing. Um, <clears throat> you know, and uh, uh, Apostle Tahar brought that out. Uh, the root word, you know, to be, uh, to put to shame, be ashamed, be disconcentrate, dis, disconcerted. Uh, be disappointed to feel shame and you know the reason why uh, they're ashamed uh, in in Ezra the ninth chapter was because they went off you know because if you got that uh, uh, repentful spirit on on an Israelite they're gonna be you know feeling some type of way uh, about them going off you know they'll feel cut so to speak um, and I'm, I'm going to go into this specific trespass and the reason why, or I think, uh, uh, you know, we called, uh, previously we called Israelites that look like the other nations confusion of faces. But now, you know, the light's being shed. It just means shame of face. Um, but I'm going to start with uh, uh, Deuteronomy 7 and, let's see, I'll start at the top. It says, when the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land, whither thou goest to possess it, and hath cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them uh, before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. All right, so, you know, basically he's saying, when y'all go and conquer these other nations, just wipe them out completely. He says, don't, don't, you know, don't bargain with them. Don't, you know, make any deals with them, nothing. All right, it says, neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughters thou shalt not give unto his sons, uh, nor his daughters shalt thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following me. All right, he said, because he, he says, uh, uh, you know, don't let let y'all your children marry with their other children. All right, it says, for they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you, and destroy thee suddenly. But thus shall ye deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars, and break down their images, and cut down their groves, and burn their gra graven images with fire. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Alright, so let's read into er, Ezra the ninth chapter, alright, and see what it says. Let's start at the top. Uh, it says, Now when these things were done, the, prince, the princes came to me, saying, The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the people of the lands, doing according to their abominations. You know, so they're practicing their customs, their abominations. All right? Deliberately disobeying, you know, what it says. And, you know, remember these uh, uh, nations, you know, because it... it talks about these nations in, in Ezra the ninth chapter. It says, uh, Even of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. All right? 
and it says, uh, For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the holy seed ha have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Yea, the hand of the princes and rulers hath been chief in this trespass. So, I mean, that, that's, that right there is, you know, them trespassing, and then, you know, that, that's why they're, they're shamed face, faced, because they did deliberately disobeyed uh, this commandment. Um, so it says, since the days of our fathers have we been in a great trespass unto this day. So this was like happening throughout generations, you know. They, they were Gentiles, you know, they're, they're going after the other nation's customs. That's what was, you know, shameful about this act, all right. Um, and it doesn't necessarily mean, mean that they looked like uh, the other nations, even though, you know, they, they, the seed was mingled. And they probably most likely did end up looking like the other nations. But the main thing that, was, that made them a confusion of face or a shame face, shameful of face, uh, was because they're going after these, uh, 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 practicing these other nations' customs. All right, they were turning from the Lord. All right, it says, uh, <clears throat> and for our iniquity, our, our iniquities have we, our kings and our priests, been delivered into the hand of the kings of the lands, to the sword, to captivity, and to a spoil, and to confusion of face, as it is this day. All right, so that that's why, <laughs> you know, they're shame faced, is because they're they're turning from the Lord, acting like these other nations and mingling themselves with these other nations, all right, making covenants with them, making marriages with them. Now, there is a, a you know, this is a Deuteronomy 21 and uh, uh, verse 10, I'll start at 10. It says, When thou goest forth to war against thine enemies, and the Lord thy God hath delivered them into thine hand, and thou hast taken them captive, and seest among the captives a beautiful woman, and hast a desire unto her that thou wouldest have her, have her to thy wife. Now this is going into when, uh, uh, because when, when you read the scriptures, you know, the Most High either had it to where he wanted that, that whole land, you know, just wiped out, desolate, you know, slay utterly woman and child, uh, e even the animals, um, and, and all their possessions, uh, you know, burnt, you know. All, all the uh, gold and stuff, you know, they, he just said, you know, throw it all away, man. You know, burn it all, purge it all, all right? But there were certain in instances uh, where he said, you know, take take their spoils. And, and if you see a beautiful woman and you want her to take, have her to thy wife, then here's what you got to do. Verse 12, then thou shalt bring her home to thine house, and she shall shave her head and pair her nails. So, you know, you shave their head, and you cut back her nails, all right? And then it says, And she shall put uh, the raiment of her captivity from off of her, and shall remain in thine house, and bewail her father in her month, a full month. All right? So, you know, you give her a, a whole month to uh, 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 to weep for, for uh, loss, because, you know, you just took her for a spoil. You know, her... her she, she's suffering loss right now. So you just put her away for, for a month. You know, shave her head, clip her nails, put her away for a month. And after that, thou shalt go in unto her and be her husband, and she shall be thy wife. So after, you know, a month, after her hair's grown back, you know, after her nails grow back, and, and she's had time to, to uh, be in mourning for, for her loss, then that's when you deal with her, all right? Um, let's see, and then I'm going to go to uh, Deuteronomy 20, uh, verse 10. It says, When thou comest nigh unto a city to fight against it, then proclaim peace unto it. And it shall be, if it make thee answer of peace, and open unto thee, then it shall be, that all the people that is found therein shall be tributor, tributaries unto thee, and they shall serve thee. Alright, so, you know, he, he said, Hey, before you go into this city, declare peace unto it. And if they, they're down with that, then they shall be your tributaries. You know, they're, they're going to pay tribute to you. And they're going to be your servants. And then it says, and if it will 
make no peace with thee, but will make war against thee, then thou shalt besiege it. All right, take it over, overthrow the, the rulers in that place. When the Lord thy God hath delivered it into thine hands, thou shalt smite every male thereof with the edge of the sword. But the women and the little ones and the cattle and all that is in the city, even all the spoil thereof, uh, shalt thou uh, take unto thyself. Thou shalt eat the spoil of thine enemies, which the Lord thy God hath given thee. All right? So there's times where, you know, the Most High wanted us to, to take spoils from that land. All right? But then there's other times where he said, no, nah, just uh, uh, wipe, wipe, in, wipe them out completely. All right? But in the case of, you know, Ezra the ninth chapter, he, he wanted them to be wiped out completely, and he didn't want them to mingle with the, the uh, other nations, all right? Because he knew that if they did that, then they were going to turn from him, all right? But in these cases, you know, they're going to uh, <clears throat> destroy all the males and take the spoils, and they, they want to be polluted by the other one. They put their, uh, uh, they'd subject the, the people that they took over under the uh, um, uh, Israelite law, all right? But um, with that, I hope that was edifying and uh, shalom.